I think we're just in a friendship recession, to be honest. You're eating fruit on chicken. Why can't I eat fruit on pizza? Just the like natural hair police and just the hair police in general, they get on my nerves. I'm not gay. I'm a heterosexual. Let me just point that out. I believe that there is only one God or no God. White people are so annoying. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Imagine like, you know, we get to heaven and we see murderers and serial killers there. It's not that you can just be a murderer and then still end up in heaven. You have to change. You don't believe that Jesus is Lord. Ultimately, you believe in a different Lord or no Lord at all if you're atheist. Is it just me or are the settings on here looking very different? Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be telling y'all about my unpopular opinions. But before we get into the video, I need to give a quick little disclaimer. These are just my opinions. So I don't want you guys to take this to heart. Anything, anything that I say, I don't want you guys to take it to heart. Um, it's okay to disagree with me. Like, it's completely fine. This is just what I think. This is just what I believe. I do talk on religion, mental health, homosexuality, and it's just what I believe in my opinion. If you agree, if you disagree, it's fine. Even if something that I say in this video hurts your feelings, um, feel free to click off the video. It's completely fine. But anyways, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hi, friends. Welcome back to another video. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today, I want to talk about my unpopular opinions. My unpopular, but maybe some of them might be popular, who knows. So I want to talk about my unpopular opinions because I want to start a podcast. And I've been talking about starting a podcast for a minute. While we wait for that to happen, I'm just gonna, I don't know, maybe I'll just talk about some some of my podcast topics on my YouTube channel and one of those topics is unpopular opinions. Yeah, I feel like some of them might not be that unpopular. I think maybe y'all will be able to relate to me. I don't know. But yeah, we're just gonna get started and I'm gonna be taking out my braids while I do this. I've had these braids in for like, I did them in July and now it's October. Okay, anyways, so yeah, let's get started. So, number... I have notes on my phone, so let's open that up. Ooh, okay. Number one, number one. Low maintenance friendships are unhealthy and dare I say, dare I say, lazy. Okay, let's talk about that. So, I think nowadays it's become pretty common for a lot of people to have low maintenance friendships. And if you aren't familiar with low maintenance friendships, from what I understand low maintenance friendships to be, it's basically friendships where like it's low maintenance it doesn't really take a lot of work for you guys to be friends with each other i understand that to be like friends where you can go a long time without talking to each other and like it doesn't ruin your relationship so like basically friends where you can go like let's say you can go like six months or so without talking to each other or hanging out with each other but it doesn't change like your friendship like you're still friends and you still have a good relationship with each other I don't know I feel like that's unhealthy to be honest and dare I say I feel like it's also kind of lazy I think what's really unhealthy is when all of your friendships are low maintenance friendships that's I feel like that's a problem it's probably a lot of work to talk to your friend every single day and I don't know if I don't know if people do that. I don't know if anyone has best friends like that where they literally talk every single day. But I feel like nowadays a lot of people have a lot of low maintenance friendships and I just feel like that's become like the the norm. I think we're just in a friendship recession to be honest. We're in a friendship recession. A lot of people don't have friends or they just have a lot of low maintenance friends. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's healthy to only talk to your friend like once in a while, once in a blue moon. I don't think that's healthy especially if it's your best friend I don't think that's healthy and I don't want to be a hypocrite I don't want to be a hypocrite because I actually feel like I have a lot of low maintenance friends but it's something that I'm trying to change it's something that I'm trying to change and I've been trying to like voice that out personally I feel like I do have a lot of low maintenance friends but I don't like the fact that I have a lot of low maintenance friends I've been saying it for a minute now that I feel like I need a high maintenance friend someone that I can just talk to more often 
because I just feel like that's what's really going to help our bond grow. I just feel like with low maintenance friends, it's like, I feel like your bond is not growing. Like you're not really growing together as friends. You're just kind of staying the same. Yeah, and the reason why I also say that low maintenance friendships are lazy is because like you our lives are not that busy for us to literally go six months without talking to each other or hanging out with each other our lives are not some of us okay some of us yeah some of us yeah some of us yeah okay yeah 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 but our lives are not that busy for us to like have a facetime call here and there you know what i mean and catch up like even if it's not even if we can't find a time to like you know meet up and hang out and this and that our lives are not that busy for us to schedule a 30 minute to an hour facetime call to chat and catch up our lives are not that busy so that's why i say it's a bit lazy having low maintenance friends like people who enjoy having low maintenance friends and things like that i just feel like it's kind of lazy i'm just getting tired of all the low maintenance friendships i don't know i just feel like it's unhealthy and dare i say it's lazy all right next <laughs> pineapple on pizza is good Pineapple on pizza is dope. I am one of those people who stands with pineapples on pizza. I don't think it's abominable. I think it's delicious. And um, I really don't know why people want to hate so much on pineapple pizza. I feel like their argument for when they say that pineapple pizza is trash, I think their argument for it is like, okay, it's a fruit. Why would you put a fruit on a pizza? But y'all be eating fruit on wings because y'all eat mango habanero wings. Did I lie? Did I lie? Mango habanero wings, that's pretty similar to pineapples on pizza. Like, you're eating fruit on chicken. So, why can't I eat fruit on pizza? And pineapple pizza, I feel like it just makes sense. Like, because think about it. What other fruit would you put on a pizza? I can't imagine putting any other fruit on a pizza. And it will bust the way that pineapples do, you know? So yeah, I stand for pineapples on pizza. I really don't think I will be able to get along with someone who doesn't like pineapples on pizza. I'm being dramatic, but yeah. All right, next. Okay, my next unpopular opinion. It seems like there's there's been an increase in autistic children over the years, and I think it may have something to do with what women, with what pregnant women are doing nowadays. Nowadays, I've noticed that there seems to be an an increase in auti autistic autistic children, autistic and also like. ADHD or just in general neurodivergent children. Let's say that. Okay, Bobbiana. Okay, Bobbiana. Okay, Bobbiana. Yeah, short braids Loki might be the next wave because um yeah. Anyways, yeah. I feel like there's been an increase in autistic children um in their in the recent years or like neurodivergent children and I feel like it might have something to do with what pre what um, pregnant women are doing nowadays? I don't I don't know the science behind it, but I'm sure there is some sort of scientific reasoning behind it. It may have something to do with their diet, or maybe like some of the things that women may be doing nowadays to induce pregnancy, like the okra water, the raspberry leaf tea. I don't know. I don't know exactly, but I just feel like it. There's probably some sort of correlation between what pregnant women are doing nowadays and the increase of neurodivergent kids. I don't know what the correlation is, but I just have a feeling that there might be a correlation between that. Okay, next. My next unpopular opinion. I feel like a lot of people say or think that relaxed hair is damaged hair. And I think the reason that they say that is because relaxed hair is chemically processed, which is true. Like, you're putting chemicals in your hair to make it straight. Like, you're putting a chemical straightener in your hair. I feel like people automatically think that since you're putting a chemical in your hair, you're automatically... Um, damaging your hair and I just feel like okay if relaxed hair is damaged is damaged hair because of the fact that you you it's been chemically treated then I feel like in the same way color treated hair is damaged hair if it's been like chemically colored if you dye your hair or bleach your hair I feel like people don't really use that same energy when they're talking about relaxed hair being damaged all because it's relaxed okay so is chemically treated hair damaged because it's colored you know what I'm saying? Like, if I dye my hair red, I'm putting a chemical in my hair to dye it red. So is my hair damaged now since I've dyed it red? Because apparently my hair is damaged now since I've relaxed it. Just the, like, natural hair police and just the hair police in general, they get on my nerves, to be honest. <laughs> I feel like you can have healthy, relaxed hair. I'm not gonna lie, I don't feel like my hair is the healthiest. That's because when I went relaxed, I did it very impulsively, so I didn't really look into 
like how to maintain it and how to keep it healthy and this and that. So me personally, I don't feel like my hair is the healthiest, but I have seen I have seen girls with thick, um, full, healthy looking, relaxed hair. So I know that it's possible, and I and I believe that you can have healthy, color treated hair as well. So I feel like you can you can chemically you can put chemicals in your hair and still maintain the health of your hair. You just have to like you know put in the work or you know see a specialist. All right, next next unpopular opinion: male privilege is similar to white privilege. I feel like whenever people say male privilege, they automatically they they automatically think of men getting more respect than women, which is true. And men also being like chosen first before women, like for for um, pay raises and and whatnot. What I mean by saying that male privilege is similar to white privilege is that I just feel like men have a privilege over women that they don't realize in the same way that white people have a privilege over people of color that they don't realize. Because white people, they don't realize that they have the privilege of going out every day and not being discriminated against. I think men also have the privilege of being favored by society. I feel like men also have the privilege of going out in public or going out at night and not being in fear. Like men don't have have to carry around a taser when they go out at night or pepper spray the way women do. Not all men have this privilege. I mean, I feel like they have they all have privilege like because they're men, but not all of them have privilege because you know black men they don't have privilege cuz you know if they get pulled over by a white police officer, that story might not end well as we have seen happen over and over again. But I just feel like in general, men do have privilege over women to where like they feel more safe when they go out of when they go out in the world, they can feel more safe and women we don't always feel that way. Yeah, men are scary. Men are scary and they don't realize that they're scary. That's what one of my friends one of my friends used to always say. She used to always say that men are scary and it's scary that they don't realize that they're scary, which is which I totally agree with. As a girl, like some random guy could come up and talk to you and it's like, it just makes you uncomfortable. I know I'm not the only girl that feels that way. It just makes you uncomfortable or like when you have to walk past a group of men or a group of boys and like automatically you're just feeling anxiety. It's just like, they're scary. They're scary. Or like even the little cat calls and things like that. And even if they mean it like, you know, as a joke, still it's not funny. It's, it actually scares women. Or like whenever they stare from far away, okay, it's it's scary. You know what I mean? Like men are scary and it's scary that they don't realize that they're scary. And I feel like they have the privilege of, like I said, they can go out into the world and not have to be afraid of other people or like the opposite gender. Okay, my next unpopular opinion, debauchery is not fun. I don't see how debauchery is fun. I think we all have different ideas of fun. Like what's fun to one person is not fun to another. Debauchery is defined as extreme indulgence in bodily pleasures. When I'm talking about debauchery, I mean specifically like drugs, alcohol, and fornication or adultery, whatever. Fornication slash adultery, that's what I mean. I don't think that's fun. I don't think that's cool. Even on like the more minor scale, if you will. There's some people who probably feel like, okay, if they go out, they can't have fun unless they drink or they can't have fun unless they are intoxicated. We all have different, you know, perspectives and meanings of fun. But me personally, I don't think that's fun. And I actually think it's pretty sad just seeing everyone, <laughs> just seeing everyone indulge in that type of meaningless stuff. It's actually sad. I don't, I don't really like seeing that. I feel like it's so common nowadays, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. I don't think it's fun. It's immoral. I don't think, I feel like a lot of people, they don't know how to have fun without falling into sin. And some people, you know, they're not Christian, they're probably not religious at all, so they probably don't even, like, consider it as sin, or some people, they probably don't even know that it's sin. But yeah, I just feel like there's people who... They probably feel like they have to sin to have fun, which is like stupid. Like how I said, some people who feel like they can't have a good time if they go out unless they're drunk or intoxicated in some form. That's sad. I don't. I don't. I don't like that. 
Next in popular opinion, I feel like age gaps matter when you're younger, but when you're older, they don't matter anymore. Like in terms of dating, let's say like a 24 year old is dating a 30 year old. I feel like it seems kind of it seems kind of questionable, but you know, at the end of the day, when there's an age gap, what really matters is your maturity, because you can be you can be young but still be very very mature, which I I agree with, because I feel like some people could be could be very young but still have a good level of maturity so it would make sense for them to be with someone older than them so i don't see a problem with that but i just feel like age gaps matter when you're younger but then not when you're older because let's say 24 and 30 okay let's say okay that's fine let's say, let's just say that's fine right but is 20 and 14 fine now that's questionable. Still the same gap of six years, but like it's more questionable when you're younger. By the time you're older, it's not that much questionable anymore. Or let's say 34 and 40. Like that's not that's an age gap that it's like, okay, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna really look down on that as much as they would as 30 and 24 or 20 and 14. That's crazy. 20 and 14 is crazy. <laughs> it's just crazy how that age gap matters then. Then in the future, it won't matter as much anymore. And it makes sense for the age gap to matter then because like, okay, that's a minor. A 14-year-old is a minor and a 20-year-old is an adult. Like, you know, you know better. That's illegal. You get what I'm saying? But then in a couple years, in like, let's say two decades, it's going to be 40 and 34 which isn't as questionable or as frowned upon as 20 and 14 or 30 and 24. And I feel like the most awkward age for like there to be an age gap when dating is like when you're in your 20s, maybe 30s. I feel like that's where it's like awkward because it's like, okay, you're not a minor, but at the same time, you're still pretty young. And then this other person is old. Or vice versa, you're old and then this other person is young. I just feel like that's a very awkward stage for there to be an age gap. For you to be like dating someone or talking to someone where there's an age gap between you two. I feel like that's just kind of awkward. But, um, you know, later down the line, it's not going to matter anymore. Ah! <clears throat> okay, my next unpopular opinion. Ugh. Some people are, are probably going to be mad at me for saying this, but I'm going to say it anyways because it's my opinion and it's what I believe. Okay, I don't believe that anyone can be born gay. There, I said it. Okay, I'm not I'm not gay. I'm a heterosexual. Let me just point that out. So I'm, I'm saying this from the straight point of view, which people will probably say that I'm unqualified to speak on this since I'm not gay which okay I guess I guess that makes sense it's just what I think okay I don't think that you can be born gay I just think it's more so something that you can discover over time and it's something that you can discover at a young age that's what I that's what I believe because I've heard people say that they knew they were gay since they were like in kindergarten or like that's like when they first like realized that okay I probably like you know so and so gender. I've heard people say that like, oh, I knew I was gay since I was like five or whatever. That I believe, that I believe. But born gay, that I, I don't really believe because think about it. Born, you're, if you're gonna say that you were born gay, so you came out of the womb and you were gay? I just don't really get that because I don't see how you can be born with anything except your genetics or being cognizant enough to know who your mother is because that's the womb that you came from other than that i don't see how you can be born knowing anything else say let's say someone was born with red hair that's how they came out of the womb everyone knows that they were born with red hair hey guys it's me from the future um excuse my hair i'm editing the video right now but i just wanted to explain this because i don't feel like i was i don't feel like i was explaining this analogy very very well but what i was trying to say was that i don't see how people can be born with anything except 
their genetics and being cognizant enough to know who their mother is. So using the analogy of genetics, I, I don't know if that's the best analogy to use because genetics is something that is very, very valid, like something that you can see, like um, a newborn baby born with red hair. The nurses, the doctors, everyone in that delivery room can see that this baby was born with red hair and they will write that on the birth certificate. But but being gay, that's a feeling. That's not really something that that's not really something that you can just look at someone and see and know that this person is gay. So it might not be the best an analogy to use, like the analogy of genetics. But I still do stand on even my opinion because, like I said, that is a very strong feeling, at least what I think. I think that's a very, very strong feeling to know and to be very, and you have to be very hyper aware of that. And I don't see how a newborn baby of one week old, two weeks old, less than three months old can know that they're gay. I don't see how anyone can be that hyper aware at such a young age to know that they're gay. And then I feel like babies, like baby babies, like newborn babies, I feel like they know who their mom is because that's like the first person to like, you know, cuddle them after they're born. And like I said, that's the womb that they came from. That's who's going to nurse them, you know. So I just feel like as a baby, like as an infant, as a newborn, how can you be gay? How can you come out of the womb and be gay? That's something that you have to be very aware of. Like very, very hyper aware of. Like, whoa, this is what I like. And I don't see how a newborn baby can just know that they're gay. That's what I don't get. I think it's something that you can discover over time. And I think it's something that you can realize at a very young age. Like as young as like pre-k kindergarten i think that's something that you can realize at that age that this is what you like but that doesn't necessarily mean that you were born this way i'm going to use this as an example some people may not think that this is a valid example but this is just the best example that i have right now i didn't know that i liked vanilla ice cream until i tried vanilla ice cream you get what i'm saying until i experienced it i didn't know i didn't know that this is what i like I didn't come to the conclusion of this is what I like or this is what I don't like. I didn't know that I didn't like chocolate ice cream until I tried chocolate ice cream. I like vanilla ice cream, right? I like vanilla ice cream, but I didn't know that I liked vanilla ice cream until I tried vanilla ice cream. It wasn't until I was exposed to vanilla ice cream and I experienced vanilla ice cream that I realized that I like vanilla ice cream. Same way with chocolate ice cream. I didn't know that I wasn't a fan of chocolate ice cream until I experienced chocolate ice cream. I was exposed to chocolate ice cream. I tasted chocolate ice cream and I realized I don't like chocolate ice cream. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that I was born that way. That doesn't necessarily mean that I was born knowing that I like vanilla ice cream and I, and I don't like chocolate ice cream because from the second I was born, I didn't experience or try both ice creams so how would I have known that are y'all picking up what I'm putting down as a baby as a newborn how do you even know what being gay is how do you even know what homosexuality is for you to say that you were born this way I just really don't think that anyone can be born gay and I'm sure some people will say that I'm not qualified enough to say that since I'm not gay sure the people who say that they were born gay I'm sure they do have a reason of why they say that but this is just my reasoning of why me personally I don't believe that okay guys Ooh. <sighs> my next unpopular opinion I believe that anyone can be saved saved and like become a Christian become a follower of, uh, a follower of Christ <sighs> according to the Bible and I'm gonna quote the, the scripture on the screen to show you guys according to the Bible all you need to become saved is to have faith and believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe that he's the son of God and that God rose him from the dead. I think that anyone can be saved because I don't I don't think that God's grace is meant for a specific person or a specific group of people. I believe that God's grace was meant for all of us, like for literally all of humanity. So even the even the darkest and most wicked people, I believe that they can still be saved. And the reason why I put um, air quotes on that is because all of us are sinful, all of us are sinners, and all of us are evil to be honest. So who are we to really say that the, what one person is 
worse than we are. I feel like a lot of people think that they're a good person all because they, they're not a serial killer, all because they don't commit murder, but all of us sin, all of us sin in one way or the other. Or the other. All of us sin, so, um, and all of us need grace. And I, don't, I also don't believe that there's any big or small sin. I don't think that there's one sin that is, that is of greater extent to the other. So, for example, I don't think that committing murder is worse than lying. I think they, it's both sin and it's something that displeases the Lord. So, so, yeah, I believe that anyone can be saved, even the most darkest of people. Like, um, for example, Jeffrey Dahmer. I watched the Dahmer series on Netflix, but I don't know how accurate that is to his his real story. At the end of the show, Dahmer got baptized. It seemed like he got saved, but who really knows, to be honest, that's between him and God. Between him and God, like if he was really saved or not, none of us will actually really know that. It's so scary to say, it's actually so scary to say, but there's actually a possibility that Dahmer could literally be in heaven right now. And I know that's like really confusing like it was it was really hard for me to understand at first too and it still kind of is but like I said according to the Bible if all you need to be saved is to have faith is to have faith and you know accept the Lord into your heart then literally anyone can be saved and God doesn't hold your past against you when you're saved you're saved he who is in Christ is a new creation old things have passed away everything has become new because also think about it there were people in the Bible who were murderers too but then God touched their heart they they had they began to have faith in the Lord and, and they started walking in the way of the Lord and doing things the correct way people like Paul who was literally a murderer he used to kill Christians before he became a Christian himself. And also people like David, who was a huge liar. He slept with another man's wife, first of all. He slept with another man's wife and then got that man killed. But we know David as, according to the Bible, we know David as a man after God's heart. This man was broken. This man was a mess. But you know, eventually he got his act together. So I feel like anyone can be saved. I don't think God's grace is just meant for a specific group of people. I think it was meant for everyone. And that is a good thing. It's scary. It's scary because like I said, imagine like, you know, we get to heaven and we see murderers and serial killers there. But Christ has changed their identity and they're no longer known for their sin. But they're known for, you know, what God has called them to be. But something else that I wanted to point out about this is that God's grace is for everyone. Yes, God's grace is for everyone and God's grace can literally save anyone. Grace should not be taken advantage of. Should we continue sitting so that more grace may abound? By no means. We have become dead to sin, so why should we continue to live in it? This is what I mean by Christ changing people's identity, and that's why anyone can be saved. But that doesn't mean that you continue to sin, and that doesn't mean that you can just get away with anything. No, 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 no. It's not that you can just be a murderer and then still end up in heaven. You have to change. You have to change. That is what's, that's what's very important about coming to Christ. You come to Christ as you are, but you don't stay as you are. You change, okay? That's what I wanted to point out. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I would really, I would really call this an, an unpopular opinion, but this is like one of this is definitely going to be one of my topics that I talk about on my podcast. It might it might even be the first the first or second episode. I don't know, but it's more so a question. Okay, so the question is, what are we willing to do to not be lonely? And by we, I don't mean like we individually, like us as us individually because I don't want us I don't really want us to think of it that way but just we as like humanity we as society just people in general what are people willing to do to not be lonely because I feel like people are willing to go to some to some great lengths for companionship and to not to not be lonely <laughs> once again Jeffrey Dahmer cause this man this man killed people and kept them and ate them because he was lonely and he wanted companionship. He did all of that because he was lonely. That's crazy. That is so, so crazy. People are really going, willing to go to some great, great lengths to not be lonely. And even, and even if it's not to the, to the extreme 
of murder or cannibalism just like strange things that people do sometimes like sometimes and it's things that literally everyday people do like stalking someone's instagram page or i don't know talking to ourselves because literally everyone talks to, to, to themselves i literally talk to myself all the time i'm basically talking to myself right now but you know what are we willing to do to not be lonely because we i feel like we do a lot of things to combat our loneliness without even realizing it loneliness is going to be one of my podcast um topics one of my podcast episodes because i just feel like i have a lot to say about that all right next unpopular opinion i don't think everyone needs therapy but i do think that everyone needs someone to talk to i think everyone needs someone that they can be completely transparent with and that they can tell like everything to that person that you're speaking to that person also needs to be wise enough to give you good advice um i think everyone needs someone that can hold them accountable like a mentor or friend whatever but but i do believe that everyone does need someone to talk to but i don't think everyone needs therapy yeah i don't think everyone needs therapy but i do think that everyone does need someone to talk to next i don't like when people are sensitive to sarcasm i feel like i'm a pretty sarcastic person but um the line between where sarcasm goes from being a joke to actually being offensive is when you start getting passive aggressive with it and like start talking to people like they're dumb okay that's when that's not cool because i don't like when people do that to me i don't like when people are passive aggressive and like literally talk to me like i'm stupid and from what i've noticed it's always white people that do that white people are so annoying oh my gosh i don't feel like i get along that well with people who are sensitive to sarcasm but like you know me being someone that doesn't want to hurt people's feelings i know how to tone myself down when i'm around those types of people i don't really like when people are sensitive to sarcasm like it's literally just a joke like calm down you know what i mean it's, it's like, just because i feel like when i'm around people who are really sensitive to sarcasm i feel like i always have to apologize and be like oh i'm sorry it was just a joke like i didn't mean like that and that's annoying that's annoying always having to like apologize because my joke my joke offended you and this and that but like i know that like if i was talking to somebody else who understands my sense of humor and understands my understands my sarcasm i wouldn't have to be going in that circle of apologizing for a joke that i made i mean like people are overly sensitive to sarcasm it's kind of annoying oh okay next unpopular opinion jesus is lord that might be a popular opinion i don't know that might be a popular opinion that might be an unpopular opinion but yeah jesus is lord i also believe that jesus is god as well because god is father son and holy spirit the son being jesus christ because god is a triune god a god of like three parts to him there's three parts to this one god and jesus is one of those parts so jesus is god okay let me say this because in order to become a christian in order to become saved like i i i said this before you have to believe that jesus is lord and you also have to confess it if you confess with your mouth that jesus is lord and you believe that god rose him from the dead then you will be saved a huge part of your salvation is literally verbally confessing that jesus is lord and so i just feel like anyone who is not willing to confess that jesus is lord it's probably because they don't believe that jesus is lord for whatever reason so if you don't believe that jesus is lord I feel like ultimately you believe in a different Lord or no Lord at all if you're atheist. I feel like that's the huge difference between Christianity and other religions. Because other religions, they believe Jesus, they probably believe Jesus to be something else or they don't believe in Jesus, Jesus at all. Because I know in Islam, people believe that Jesus is a prophet. So I just highly doubt that anyone who believes that Jesus is a prophet would ever have the guts to, well not ever, because God can change anyone's heart. I find it hard to believe that they will be able to confess that Jesus is Lord because that's not what they believe. So my unpopular opinion, Jesus is Lord. If you're not willing to confess that Jesus is Lord, then it's probably because you don't believe that Jesus is Lord. You probably believe in a different Lord or no Lord at all, depending on, you know, what you believe and what religion you follow. Okay, now, while we're on the topic of God and religion, another unpopular opinion that I have, I believe that there is only one God, or I'm only saying this hypothetically and just for the purposes of this video, I believe that there is only one God or no God. Now, I believe that there is a God, me personally, but um, 
you know, just for the sake of this video, I, I think that there can only be one God or no God. And so let me just explain that a little bit more. When I was younger, I used to think about like different religions and, um, you know, how we all kind of basically believe in a different God. If you like start to compare these religions, I feel like you would probably find like what you can go to heaven for in one religion, you could go to hell for in a different religion. Or like what you're supposed to do in one religion is probably considered sinful in another religion. The same way like us in Christianity, we're saying, okay, Jesus is Lord, this is our God is the one and only God and this and that and there's no other God before him. I'm sure there's other religions saying the same thing about their God. It just makes me question like, okay, so what is the truth? Because when I was younger, I kind of thought, I kind of thought like, okay, since everyone believes in something different, maybe like at the end of it all, like, you know, the afterlife or the rapture, maybe it will be like, okay, according to your perspective religion then you will go then you will be judged according to that and you will go wherever you're supposed to go so like let's say you've been buddhist all your life so whatever buddhism teaches you about the afterlife according to that that's how you will be judged and like it's the same it will be the same way for christianity islam hinduism and so and so forth all these other religions that's what i used to think when i was younger as i got older and i started to think about it more I don't think that that would be fair because not all of these doctrines are the same. Not all of these religions are the same. So what you can go to heaven for in one religion, you can go to hell for in the next. There might be one religion where they believe in multiple gods, right? And so it will be the correct thing for them to do to serve multiple gods. But in another religion, they might be teaching you that, okay, there is only one god. This is the one god that you should serve and you shouldn't serve any other god. So in this specific religion serving multiple gods is is the right is the correct thing to do so if that's the way you've been living your life then you will go to heaven but in this religion it's not so then if that's what you were doing serving multiple gods in this religion you will go to hell and so i just don't think that's fair because if you were because like i said earlier if we're going to be judged like in respect to what we've all been following so like each religion being judged to what they've all been following when you compare it side by side it doesn't it doesn't seem to be fair you get what i'm saying so that's why i believe that there should there can only be one god and one heaven and hell and one truth either one or none i just feel like that's what would be the most fair if we were all judged according to one doctrine and one truth i believe that there can only be one truth basically because if there were multiple, when you compare it side by side, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't look fair. That's why I'm saying I believe that there's either one God or no God. Me personally, I believe that there is one and only Almighty God. Creation is a sign of a creator. That's why I believe that there's a God, to be honest. Because creation is a sign of the creator. Atheists, I feel like that's like what they often question. is like, okay, how do you know that God is real? How do you even know that all of this is real? Like some people, they believe that science is the answer for everything. I don't think that science can answer everything. Because let's just, you know, let's just simplify it. Let's just simplify it a little bit. How did we get here? How did we get here? <laughs> mom and dad. Okay. Yeah. Mom and dad. Okay. Grandparents. Great, great grandparents and so on and so forth. The first man on earth, how did they get here? Let's say they evolved from apes. Let's let's say let's say human beings evolved from apes. So how did the first ape, the first animal on earth get here? Let's say they evolved from something else. How did that get here? You know what I'm saying? Like where did it start? Where did it start? What came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken or the egg and how did they get there? If it's the egg, how did it get there? If it's the chicken, how did it get there? Who put it there? You know what I'm saying? I just feel like there has to be there there has to be something bigger than us who created all of this. And the Bible confirms that literally in Genesis, in the first chapter of the Bible, it says God created the heavens and the earth. God literally created everything in seven days. There was literally nothing, and God formed everything out of nothing. But you know that's. That's what I believe according to the Bible. So the way I would explain it to like an atheist or someone who doesn't believe that, that there is a God. Look at everything around you. Creation is sign of a creator. The, Bi the Bible also explains this as well. Creation is sign of, of, a, of a creator. How did the sun get here? How did the sky get here? How did the trees get here? How did the animals get here? How did you get here? How did your parents get here? How did the first man on earth get here? I feel like creation is sign of a creator. And so because of that, I don't think that there's any 
reason for you to say that there is no God. Some people will question, okay, if that's the case, if that's the case and God created everything, so who created God? The thing is about God is that he wasn't created. It, that's when it takes, that's when you have to start digging deeper into like trying to understand the nature of God and who God is. When you do that, you'll see that God is a being that wasn't created because he's outside matter, space, and time. So if he's outside matter, space, and time, then he's not limited to matter, space, and time. <sighs> there's a lot that I could say about that, but yeah, at the end of the day, I believe that there's either one God or no God, and me personally, I believe that there is one God. So, <clears throat> I feel like that last one <laughs> was pretty long. But, um, friends, so it's the next day now. I'm just going to close out the video here. I finished my hair. I did my relaxer routine. I didn't film it though because, I mean, let's be honest, it's a bit overdone at this point. Not to say I won't ever film it again because I definitely would. But yeah, anyways, yeah, those were all my unpopular opinions for now. I still have more unpopular opinions, but those are all that I'm going to say for this video. If you guys want a part two, let me know. Just tell me your unpopular opinions in the comments below because I'm interested in hearing y'all's unpopular opinions and also like if you can relate to any of my unpopular opinions like if you agree if you disagree let me know and yeah thanks for watching this video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye